Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. Let's talk about our developing winter storm on the East Coast. The bad news for snow lovers in the Piedmont, this doesn't really get cranked up to the east, but it's close enough and we've got some upper level uh, support that's going to help enhance some of the snowfall. I can actually start to see some of the development here of the system. If you look carefully, we've got the Arctic front and the northern stream energy producing snow across the Ohio Valley. But look off the Florida coast. We're starting to see some cloud development as we start to see low pressure develop here and this energy kind of transfer there and become one big low pressure system and move up the coast. Now, you think the forecast is difficult here. It's even worse <laughs> to the northeast. Uh, we're actually getting some pretty good clarity on what we're going to see here in the Carolinas. So let me show you how this unfolds. So as we look at the setup for this, one interesting thing is a lot of the guidance. Remember I just showed you the current radar. I'm actually going to turn the current radar back on for a second. And you see this snow showing up here across the Ohio Valley. I'm going to turn it off. The model data is really struggling, it looks like, with this northern piece of energy or um, the Arctic front with the amount of moisture with it. So that's something to keep an eye on. And that's really what's going to drive most of the snowfall in our area so that's why it's it's very important to look at what's actually happening versus just looking at model data um so that's why i think we will see some enhancement of the snow and why when you see my forecast we're going to go a little bit um higher and i'll show you why so here's the development so either way i expect that northern branch system starts showing back up in some of the guidance here late tomorrow moving into the mountains At the same time here's low pressure on the coast but this is actually right here this is what's going to drive most of our snow more so than this thing off the coast. So watch what happens. As the load develops, you see like a little band of snow. And what this is, is this is the upper level energy going to the coast. And this is a basically the Arctic front and maybe a little bit of lee troughing. Uh, we're getting a couple smaller, small scale phenomena that are going to help create a band of brief snow across the Piedmont. It doesn't last long, but it's enough that it's going to drop some snow and then move through and go up the coast. And then on the back side of this, I mean, probably the most underplayed story in all this is how cold and windy this is. This is really cold air as this low cranks up and starts spreading that northeast wind on the coast. But for us, that's a north and northwest wind. And so really cold air here across our region. So what kind of snow are we talking about? Well, let's first look at our winter weather impacts graphic. You can see limited for the most part, but a couple areas of low. And this is going to be the big concern for us. It's going to be travel impacts. We're not looking at a huge amount of snow where I would expect, you know, three, four, five, six inches, but just the dusting to two inches would be problematic for many areas. So here's our map. Let me kind of move this out of the way so you can see it. Whoops, let me turn this off. Let me do it side by side. So here's my 9 a.m. update, and it's really not much change from last night. I generally think a trace to two inches across the area, depending on where you are. The mountains will see much more snow because on the back side, first it starts sooner there, and they also get the advantage of northwest flow. If there's heavier bands towards Raleigh East, maybe two to four, but that's probably the biggest bus potential um, east of here because we could see lighter amounts than that. We'll go in a little bit closer here, and I'll show you kind of the total. So don't read too much into where the specific line is like someone sitting here going oh am i getting two inches or a trace you're probably closer to one to two than the trace i always tell people if you got a band of snow the way we contour this this is a trace this is one inch and then the, the band over here is two inches so the gradient should be somewhere like that but anywhere in here honestly one to two inches is possible because there's going to be what we call banding and think about it as thunderstorms we know there's going to be pop-up thunderstorms but where the heavy downpour occurs, it's kind of hard to tell until the band sets up. But again, looks a lot sim a lot like last when uh, this Friday, excuse me. So very similar to that setup, but over a much bigger area, and certainly later in the evening. And I think that's an important factor here um, is the timing of this because I think after 10 p.m. is when things really crank up, um, and it's in the overnight hours. Remember last Friday, a lot of this happened pre midnight. Um, we could see a lot of this after midnight into Saturday morning because it's colder. You're going to see more slick spots there. Um, my probability chart, I always like showing this the boomer bus graphic. You know, we're basically in this trace to two inch amount. So if you wonder why, you know, there's a, there's a chance it could go higher. You know, you're looking at, you know, 85% within this range right here. The bust range up here um, is probably going to be banding and it's not going to be widespread. Still a 10% chance of nothing. And that would primarily be because it becomes all rain, not because the storm misses us. And uh, and I'll show you this this kind of setup here in a minute. 
Um, but let me show you quickly um, the future cast here short term. So I'm going to I'm going to stop this. This is our, our short range rapid refresh guidance. And you can see Friday, here comes the batch of snow into the mountains. Um, and if we see underperformance of snow, or in this case, under, under our forecast, it's because of this. I do expect some rain to mix in at the beginning. And the rain, depending on how long it lasts, could cut down on the snow totals. It's going to change the snow. But the timing of that is going to be really crucial. This isn't going to be an ice setup. This isn't going to be a sleet setup. It's either going to be rain or snow. So this could go from rain to big fat snowflakes mixed in to just snow real quickly. And that's kind of the setup because the Arctic air is coming in with this batch of moisture. So if you're looking for something that could cut down the totals, it would be that there's more rain, something that could make the totals higher. This transition happens quicker. So that's really what's driving the more or less scenario here, more so than the system tracking closer or being stronger. It's more about the transition from rain to snow. And you can see the temperatures falling quickly as the snow moves in. By early morning, we're in the 20s and teens. And this is why Saturday morning's roads will be so difficult. Because remember, it's going to start as rain, change to snow overnight, and the temperature is going to fall. So you could imagine how the roads could be on Saturday morning. So Saturday morning looks really slick. Now, if you're waiting to see what time this thing's warm up, it's probably after lunchtime, um, you know, that noon to 1, 2 p.m. When things are in the 30s, it'll be windy. The sun will be up. So we will be melting um, some of that snow and ice. So we talked about that transition period. Well, one of the things you can look at is the short range ensembles. And you can see the rain starts here. There's a period of mixing after 8 p.m. Um, but it's really more like 2 a.m. when this becomes primarily snow. And then as we go into early, this is basically 3, 4 in the morning. So this kind of shows that transition, if you look carefully. Starting as rain, probably in the afternoon here, the transition rain-snow mix happening Saturday or Friday evening, and then overnight into Saturday morning, this becomes all snow um, as far as we're concerned. Now, the ensembles, I always like showing you these European ensembles. Every single ensemble member has snow for Charlotte, about two inches. Um, GFS. Not, not as exciting, but uh, oh, more than half have some snow in the forecast. And if I look, go back to the Shref, we show you the total snowfall. You see the spread. It's a crazy spread. But the mean is right now right around 1.1 inches. So it's right in our 1 to 2, trace to 2 inch amount. But there's a huge spread. There's a bunch up here, but there's actually more clustered down here. And if I look at the means, you kind of see how they've been trending down a little bit from the crazy 2.5 inches uh, three runs ago. We're now settled in anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half. So I think that gives you a fairly good representation of what we're going to expect with this system. So I'll do updates again uh, throughout tonight and early tomorrow. But right now, the timing looks to be late Friday night. Got a big Hornets game, I know. People asking about getting out. I think if the sooner you leave after the game, the roads will be okay. But the later you get, you get closer to midnight. This is when things are going to get pretty dicey across the area because the combination of heavier snow and the temperature falling could cause some big issues by early Saturday morning. So we'll likely see winter weather advisories for most of the area, probably winter storm watches for the mountains possibly, but I think this is going to be more of a winter weather advisory setup because the amounts are less than two inches or two inches or less in most locations.